suffered again and again uh, at the hands of, uh, of terrorists and uh, we condemn uh, all terrorism everywhere. Uh, the people of London and Manchester have showed resolve uh, in responding to those attacks and now today is the time for the Security Council to show resolve uh, in responding to terrorism more broadly. Uh, we uh, look forward to working uh, with the government of Iraq on accountability uh, for all crimes committed by Daesh uh, and we look forward to hearing from Jeff Feltman about uh, the way that Daesh uh, is, uh, is continuing to uh, continue its campaign around the world and uh, we will be setting out how uh, we are combating uh, that campaign, both in terms of territory on the ground, but also online. And as the Prime Minister, Theresa May, has made clear, we need to do a better job at closing down the space uh, that Daesh and other terrorist organisations are able to use online to spread their uh, poisonous ideology. Ambassador, as the UN looks at what it can do to combat uh, Daesh's uh, work around the world, how important is it for the UN to support efforts to reconcile, for example, the rift in the GCC, which itself has been trying to deal with Daesh's uh, impact in Syria and in Iraq. Well, the United Kingdom is proud to be a leading uh, part of the anti-Daesh coalition. I think that all of the GCC countries are in that coalition. We certainly work very closely individually with the GCC countries and collectively with the GCC as an organization. And we very much hope that the divisions in the GCC will be healed uh, as soon as possible, not least uh, so that all those countries can together uh, with us and with other allies counter terrorism in their region and beyond. If that rift isn't uh, mended, does that hamper the efforts to stop Daesh to uh, basically pull it apart? No, I think we are determined to continue our, all of our efforts against Daesh. We want to work with uh, all of the GCC countries and we'll carry on doing so. Uh, Edie. Yeah, I was just going to ask about uh, North Korea, the latest launches. You expecting a Security Council reaction and isn't this another violation? Well, we condemn uh, the latest uh, provocations uh, from uh, DPRK uh, and we look forward to working with our council colleagues about the best way to respond to them. It's, uh, it's irresponsible uh, and it, it, what, it is destabilizing what is already uh, a very sensitive situation. And is it a violation of UN resolution since they are, seem to be cruise missiles and not ballistic missiles? Yeah, I mean, we're, 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 we're looking at the details now, but it is possible, I think, that they, are, they come underneath a threshold for, for, uh, for, for, to count as a violation. And more questions. Some are saying that there might be a switch of Ismail Ol Sheikh Ahmed and Martin Kobler from, from Libya to Yemen. Have you seen that? And is it something the UK would, would support? And also on Western Sahara, is there a hold up on Hans Kohler, or Horst Kohler, or is there, I know a letter went in, but what's happened with that? Those are all announcements for the UN Secretary General or his spokesperson to, 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 to announce, so I'll, I'll wait for that. Suffice it to say that we work very closely with, uh, with the Secretariat on, uh, on, on, on all uh, senior issues, including, including appointments, and we remain in close touch with the UN about getting uh, the right leadership in place, first of all, to succeed Martin Kobler uh, in Libya. We had a very uh, important session with him yesterday uh, and, and, and other SRSG appointments. Okay, all right. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.